Sometimes you formulate your hypothesis and then you get your data, you run your analysis and you see that everything you thought about the reality is not true. My name is Aneta Brzezicka and I am a head of Neurocognitive Research Center. And we are now in this center. It consists of many research groups. I'm also a teacher, so I teach um, stuff about brain, about physiology of the brain, mainly about EEG. Uh, and I also uh, have many MA students or PhD students. My name is Anastasia Ruban and I'm a PhD student here uh, in this EEG lab and we currently running a project on psychedelic users in natural environments. So we invite individuals who use psychedelics and individuals who have not used psychedelics to test whether they differ in processing of emotional stimuli and self-relevant stimuli. And they run some procedures on our computer uh, with EEG cap on them and this is an Arkadiusz, a very important uh, part of our team. He helps us to hold electrodes, so we put electrodes first on him, and then we put the cup with electrodes on the participant uh, and do uh, manipulations to record an EEG signal. My first degree, let's say, is psychology, and it's cognitive psychology. But later in my research life, let's say, uh, I started to be more involved in the biological basis of our mind, of our psyche. Uh, so I started to study brain. So nowadays I am on one hand psychologist, but on the other hand I am neuroscientist. So I'm trying to combine these two approaches in my every project. I started my research endeavor, let's say, with the project uh, on depre depressed people. And I was uh, interested how depression influences uh, cognitive functioning, especially working memory. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what is uh, going on with brain of depressed people when they are solving some tasks. Later, uh, one of my PhD uh, students, uh, Alexandra Kołodziej, joined me to this topic and we wanted to check whether we can explain those cognitive difficulties in this uh, depressed group by looking at the alpha wave. Some scientists claim that depressed people have different alpha waves recorded over frontal uh, parts of our brain. Frontal parts are here, so we put electrodes here and we compare this alpha wave from left and right side, and depressed people have different uh, amount of this wave than people who are, not, who are not suffering from depression. And it is called alpha asymmetry uh, index. Um, and for many years, it was uh, thought that it's specific for depression, that we can measure this, uh, this thing and we can say whether somebody is or not uh, depressed. And Ola ran almost 300 analyses on this data. And she found this pattern, this uh, known from the literature pattern, only in 13 analyses. It was like very, very sm small percentage of what we expected. And the conclusion was that, uh, that this index probably is not that characteristic for depression and we should not use it as something which uh, is endophenotype or psychophysiological index of depression. Those data were so good that uh, we were able to publish it in a very prestigious journal, eLife. And I am very proud of all, our, of course, and the whole team. Being a researcher is on the one hand, uh, I think that the best job in the world. So it is very rewarding in the sense that uh, you create something, you create your research project, you create your plan for the experiment, and then it is up to you 
how you analyze the data you recorded. But uh, I have the feeling that being a researcher, uh, it's like the all day work. Sometimes I think that, oh gosh, I would like to go to work and work from 8 to 4 p.m. and be done. Sometimes you are, you're going to sleep and then you have some idea and then you really want to keep this idea in your mind so you get up and you write it down because you will forget about it. And you can be exhausted after some time of working like very, very hard and all day. But I would never ever change my job to another job. <laughs>